There are three ways two numbers can be related to each other. They can be equal to each other, one can be larger than the other, or one can be smaller than the other, depending on the order in which you read them. When comparing two numbers to each other, we use symbols instead of words because it's easier to write symbols. The problem most people have is remembering what the specific symbol means. Let's see if we can figure out an easy way to remember the definition of these symbols. If we want to compare these two numbers to each other, we read it as 6 equals 6. If we want to compare these two numbers to each other in the order that you see them written, it's 6 is greater than 2, or 6 is larger than 2, or 6 is bigger than 2. If we want to read these two numbers compared to each other in the order that they are written, it's 2 is less than 6, or 2 is smaller than 6. It's pretty simple to read these numbers if you use words to compare them to each other. But let's see if we can use symbols instead of words. It's using those symbols where I get confused, Mr. C. Okay, for the top numbers, everyone should know that this is the sign for equal. And the second set of numbers, this is a sign for greater than. And it's obvious that the first number here is larger than the second number. We always read left to right, and if you do that, you will always be able to place the proper sign between the two numbers. In the bottom set of numbers, this is the sign for less than. And here too, it should be obvious that the first number is smaller than the second number when you read left to right. Now let me explain how you can always remember which sign to use. Here is an easy way to remember the definition of the two different ways an arrowhead can point if you forget. In the first set of numbers, you'll notice that the larger number is first, and the smaller number is second. And the tip of the arrow always points to the smaller number. In the second set of numbers, the smaller number is first, and again, the tip of the arrow is still always going to point to the smaller number. If you look at the arrowhead, it has a small tip and an open, larger end. The open or larger part of the arrowhead always goes with the larger number. And the tip of the arrow always points to the smaller number. If you can remember this fact, you will always know which way to point the arrowhead between any two numbers. Just write two numbers down next to each other and put the words between them in regards to their relationship with each other. Let's see if we can properly place the arrowhead between these two numbers and see if we can then remember its definition. Irving, can you place the arrowhead between these two numbers and tell me in words what it means? Yep, I sure can. I read this as seven is greater or larger than four. I know that the tip of the arrowhead or smaller end points to the smaller number and the open or larger end points to the larger number like this. So I know that when the arrow points to the right, it means greater or larger than. Bruno, can you place the proper symbol between these two numbers? Yes, I know that reading from left to right, that 21 is smaller than 36. The tip of the arrowhead points to the 21 because that's a smaller number. And I read that as 21 is less than or smaller than 36. Okay, let me ask you a question before we move on. What if you forget the definition of greater than or less than? What could you do to remember them? Let me give this a shot. If I wasn't sure, all I'd have to do is write two numbers side by side, then read them left to right. I can pick any number I want for the first one like 5. Then I can pick any number for the second one like 3. Next, all I have to do is remember to place the arrowhead with the tip or smaller end towards a smaller number and the open end or larger side towards a larger number. Now all I have to do is read the order of the numbers left to right. 5 is obviously larger than 3, so when the arrowhead is pointing to the right, it means greater than or larger than. If I wrote those two numbers in the other order, 3 first then 5, I would flip the arrowhead to point the other way and it reads 3 is less than or smaller than 5. So when the arrowhead points to the left, it means less than or smaller than. That's correct. If you ever forget the definition of the two ways the arrowhead is pointing, just write two numbers alongside each other, and the only part you have to remember 
is the arrow tip points to the smaller number and the open end points to the larger number. Then all you have to do is read the relationship of the numbers to each other from left to right. Okay, now let's use this information to compare decimal numbers to each other. But first we have to review a little about fractions since we're going to have to change the decimal numbers to fractions before we can compare them to each other. When you learn fraction arithmetic, you should have learned how to compare fractions to each other. If you wanted to compare these two fractions to each other to see which is larger, you had to do certain things to them first. Is 5 eighths less than 7 twelfths, or is 5 eighths larger than 7 twelfths? The way to find out is that you have to find the lowest common denominator for both fractions, then raise them both up to that lowest common denominator. Then you can compare them. Here the lowest common denominator for 8 and 12 is 24. 5 eighths can be raised to 15 twenty-fourths, and 7 twelfths can be raised to 14 twenty-fourths. Now you just look at the tops to see which one is bigger and which one is smaller. 15 is larger than 14. So our original fraction, 5 eighths, is larger and 7 twelfths is smaller. Now what if you want to compare decimal numbers to each other, like these two numbers, to see which is larger and which is smaller? So I can then place the proper sign between them. I'm not quite sure how to do that. Me either, Mr. Cox. Okay, here's what I would suggest. First, we have to write these as fraction numbers, and you know how to do that now. Yes, the first number is read as 6 tenths, and it's written as a fraction 6 tenths. The second number is read as 4 tenths, and it's written as a fraction 4 tenths. Now, since we have them in fraction form, and the denominators are the same, all we have to do is compare the tops of the raised fractions to see which is larger and which is smaller. 6 is larger than 4, which means that the decimal number 6 tenths is larger than 4 tenths. So which symbol do we use here, Irving? Since 6 tenths is a larger number, the open end of the arrowhead points to it, so the tip of the arrow points to the right. That's right. 